Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasserman, and once again, we are looking at the relationship between fractions and decimals. We are in our home links uh, for everyday math, unit three, lesson ten, tenths and hundredths. Okay, so again, if you take a look at those words, tenths and hundredths, okay, those ths at the end of those number words, tell us we're talking about parts of a whole. So using this model right here, if this grid of 100 uh, little boxes, little squares, represents one whole, so this entire box re uh, represents one, what would be the fraction of the box that's shaded in? Now, you see that there are columns of boxes that are shaded in, like, say, this one here. And for every column that you have that's shaded in, that would represent 10 boxes or 1 tenth. So 10 equals 1 tenth of the entire box, the entire 1. Okay, so as I can see that there are five columns, so that there are five tenths shaded in. But along with that, we see that there are some loose boxes that don't make up a full tenth over here. And those would be considered hundredths. So each individual box would be considered one one hundredth. And as you can see, there are seven more boxes shaded in, so seven hundredths. Okay, so when I have five tenths and seven hundredths, that gives me a total of fifty seven hundredths. So if I were to represent fifty seven hundredths in decimal form, all I would do is write a zero, put in a decimal point, then write the digits 5, 7 to the right of that decimal point. That decimal point there tells us that we have less than one whole. So when you see that decimal point and there's a zero on the left-hand side of it, we're dealing with fractions of a whole. Now. Sometimes you will have decimals uh, dividing whole numbers and parts of a whole, uh, but we'll get into those kinds of mixed numbers later. Now let's take a look at number two, shall we? Number two just has full columns shaded in, okay? So if you just count the columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you see that there are seven columns of ten, okay? So those would be... 7 tenths, okay, and since there are no loose hundredths shaded in, there are zero hundredths, so that gives us the total of 70 hundredths, okay. You've probably noticed that the digit in the tenths place value and the digit in the hundredths place value is being combined together to make that answer above it. Okay, so when I have no loose hundredths, I still have 70, okay, 7 tenths, okay. And again, if I were to represent that as a decimal, I'd write the zero, the decimal point, and I can either write it 7, 0, like so, or I could simply write it like this, 0, point 7. This zero on the right hand side of the seven is a place value holder. Okay, If there are no loose hundredths to uh, point out, then I don't necessarily need to put the zero. It is assumed that if there's nothing behind that seven, when you write it out this way, 0 0.7, that there are no hundredths, and so the uh, zero is assumed. Okay, Technically speaking, that value, 0 0.7, could be represented like this. 0 0.7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on. You could go on 
infinitely to the right. So there are no hundredths, there are no thousandths, no tenths thousandths, no hundredths thousandths, no millionths. Yes, you can divide something into a million parts and have a millionth as a fraction. But the fact that there is nothing listed behind the seven, that assumption is that there are no uh, further smaller parts. Okay? Now let's take a look at uh, problems four through seven. They are just expressing a decimal amount in word form, and all you have to do is translate that into number form. Okay? So for example, 23 hundredths tells me that there is no whole number and 23 parts that were divided into 100 parts, so 0 0.23. So that is a fractional amount. But if you skip down below to number 6, for example, you're going to see that word and. And that's a very important word. Okay. So 30 and 20 hundredths is actually an expression that talks about whole numbers and, part num and parts, wholes and fractions. Okay, So the 30, you would write just like you would a normal 30. 30 and, now that and gets translated into a decimal point. 30 and 20 hundredths would look something like this. So the 30 here, that represents whole numbers. The 20 here represents parts of one, 20 hundredths. So if you were to think about this in terms of money, $30.20 would be 30 whole dollars and 20 cents. Okay, we see uh, whole and parts of uh, money all the time. Most prices are uh, presented in a uh, mixed number fashion where you have whole dollars and then parts of a whole, otherwise known as cents. Okay? So these written expressions of fractions, if you see the word and, like you do right here, that means you're dealing with whole numbers and fractions. If you don't see the word and, you're just dealing with fractions. Now, down at uh, numbers 8 and 9, we are creating a number pattern, okay? 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on, okay? If you continue that pattern, you're going to write a 0, a decimal point, and the next digit, 4, 0 0.5, and you would repeat... Okay, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, okay? Pretty straightforward, right? So we're dealing with tenths. Again, thinking about money, one-tenth of a dollar is a dime. So we're just counting dimes here. So 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents, and so forth. Now... For number 9, you're going to see the same digits being repeated, 1, 2, and 3, except this time they are spaced out with an extra 0. That means that the next number in my sequence is not 4 tenths, but 4 hundredths. Okay, so 0 0.04, 0 0.05, and so on. Okay. So again, all you have to do is remember there's an extra zero in play with those numbers. Okay? And then finally, some review from Unit 1. We're rounding numbers. Okay? Uh, let's take a look at number 11, actually. Okay? It says round 46,099 to the nearest thousand. Okay? Now that's important because you'll notice that this number is in the tens of thousands. Okay, so we're not rounding to the nearest ten thousand, we're rounding here to the nearest thousand. Okay, 
So if you recall, I like to use a roller coaster visual model. So here's my roller coaster hill, that initial hill where the car chugs on up to the top. If it gets to that halfway point, gravity is going to pull it down towards the next place value. But if it doesn't have enough oomph, it, maybe if it isn't on the uh, top of that hill, gravity is going to pull it backwards towards the last uh, place value. Okay, So when I create my number model, my gr uh, roller coaster graphic here, I'm going to pick the two thousands that the, that number 46,099 is between and that would be 46,000 and 47,000. Now if I was rounding to the nearest 10,000 I would be going between 40 and 50,000 but because I am rounding to the nearest thousand um, I'm looking at that second digit. So my halfway point between 46 and 47 would be this number, 46,500. Whenever I'm rounding a number, I'm always looking for, has that number crossed that halfway point where there's a 5? Okay. Now when I look at this number, 46,099, I'll see that the hundreds place value is still 0. There are 0 hundreds. And I need a number that has at least 500 in the hundreds place value right here. So because 46,099 isn't that close to 500, it rounds back down. So I would round 46,000 down to that number there, 46,099, becomes just 46,000. That becomes very useful, say, if I am uh, pricing out, say, a luxury automobile, and the sticker price was about $46,000, so if it was $46,099, that's closer to that than, say, 50000 If I round it to the nearest 10000 I'm going to be off by several thousand dollars. Okay? If you have questions about how to complete any of these problems, uh, talk to your math teachers. Um, they will be happy to help you if you take the time to actually ask the question. You know, um, math teachers are really smart, but you know what? We're not mind readers. So if you don't understand something and you don't tell us, uh, we can't help you because we don't know to help you. I mean, we can guess, but it's a lot easier if you just tell us, hey, we need help. Okay? And with those sage words of advice, I leave you today. Uh, good luck, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks.